Will you pray with me? Holy God, as we have prayed this morning, the Holy Spirit is the one who speaks and the one who calls. And so now we pray that he might be active among us, O Lord. Lord, help remove from me anything that would keep your words from being spoken. And Lord, open our ears, open our hearts, so that we might be ready to receive what you have prepared for us on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I was a Christian not all that many years when I got my call into ministry, and as part of that call into ministry, uh, I went to a seminary, a graduate school for people who are training to be clergy. And I did that as uh, someone who had a full-time job, and so I went to a seminary in Dayton, Ohio, called United, Methodist, uh, United Theological Seminary, uh, had this great hybrid program where uh, I could study online most of the year, but then every, uh, every now and then, a couple times a year, we would go over there for like a week or two of intensive in-person studying. Uh, and this, this seminary didn't have any dormitories, so, so my residence every time I went over to Dayton for the seminary was the Best Western uh, in Dayton, Ohio, where me and several of my other uh, students, we would all stay in rooms there. And, and because we were there and because we were studying and seeking God and seeking uh, Lord's help in our studies, uh, we would gather at night. Uh, now, the Best Western didn't have any conference rooms. So we would just gather in that little breakfast lobby area that you know in so many hotels where they have their continental breakfast in the morning right there in front of the main desk. There was this little area that had some chairs and tables. And so we would just gather there every evening uh, before we went to bed. And there'd be four, five, six, seven, eight of us, depends on the night. And we would gather and we would pray together. Now, this kind of public praying, I'll be honest with you, I'm very comfortable with it now, but then I was a little, it felt a little weird to be in the middle of this lobby of this hotel with, you know, late night truck drivers coming in to get their rooms, uh, other people moving around, and here we were, this group of seminary students sitting on these little kind of rickety chairs around this little table that wobbled when you leaned on it, and here we were praying with each other. And I was, I was raised, I became, I came to Christ in a, in a kind of, typical mainline United Methodist Church, which means we didn't pray out loud a lot in that church, and we definitely didn't display a lot of enthusiasm in our worship. You know, uh, the Presbyterians, they say, are the frozen chosen, but the church that I came from was somewhat similar, right? I mean, if someone raised their hand in worship, people got nervous around them. So here I was coming for the first time that night in, and they started praying, and they started praying out loud. And one of the beautiful, beautiful things about this seminary was it, it attracted people from all kinds of different backgrounds. So we had African-American Christians, we had Korean Christians, we had, you know, lily white guys like me. And, and when we got together, we all prayed however we were used to praying. And some of those folks, they prayed loud, and they prayed intentionally. And I was in a period of time where I was dealing with some relationship troubles and issues, and, and I really wanted help with that. I wanted healing for what was going on in my life, and so I asked for those prayers. And one day we were praying together, and I kind of had my head down on the table, and they had their hands on, and they were praying. And this one guy who is a, 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 a beautiful prayer a, a from Korea, a American citizen, but grew up there and grew up in the Korean church, he started praying for me, and as he started praying, he started praying in a different language, like tongues, like it wasn't English. He started praying loudly in the lobby of the Best Western while all these people were gathered around me, and I kind of got weirded out by it, to be honest with you. I mean, I was looking around, kind of peeking around to see who was noticing, because I wanted the healing in my life, but I wasn't so sure about the Holy Spirit, right? When he actually showed up like that, I wasn't so sure. The Holy Spirit can make some of us uncomfortable. You know, in my experience as a pastor, I, I've seen the whole spectrum of Christians I've encountered, I've interacted with the whole spectrum. You know, there are some folks who, who really long for those manifestations of the Spirit in powerful and visible ways, and there are those who are uncomfortable with that. There are those who kind of sometimes, if they think they're in a safe audience, will talk about those kind of Christians who are kind of loud and boisterous and make us a little uncomfortable sometimes. We can get uncomfortable. We want the power of the Spirit, 
but sometimes we get a little uncomfortable when he shows up. Well, I was thinking about this this week because I was reading our scripture, and our scripture is about Jesus going home to Nazareth, and we're actually going to read this story in two parts. This week and next week, we read the second half of the story. But the opening words are that in the power of the Spirit, Jesus went to Galilee and found his way to that synagogue in Nazareth. And when he opened up the scriptures to read, it said, the Spirit has anointed me. And it got me thinking about the role of the Spirit in Jesus' ministry and what Jesus had come to do. You see, that day he came, as Kathy told you, he came to proclaim that these promises of God are now fulfilled among you. The old, prophet, the old Testament prophet Isaiah had said and promised to the people, they'd heard this before, they, he'd said and promised to the people, when the kingdom comes, there will be release for the captives, there will be good news for the poor, there will, we will set the prisoners free, and the year of the Lord's favor will be poured out upon you. They had heard these promises of the kingdom coming and they had longed for them. And Jesus came to say, it is now, today is the day, the kingdom is here in fullness among you right now, seated here. But why did he wait? What, like, why was it this day that he did that? You know, we think he was around 30 years old at this time and he had grown up. He had been a carpenter's son. He had been his whole life the son of God. He had been his whole life a man without any sin. And yet here he was proclaiming now the kingdom had come. I think that word, those words about the power of the spirit, key to understanding why Jesus picked this time and this place to speak. You know, in a chapter or so before, we read about Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River. And it says in that that when Jesus came out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And God's voice spoke over him. And so here he comes in the power of the Spirit to proclaim the coming of the kingdom. He was a good and righteous man his entire life, but it was the Holy Spirit coming upon him that opened up his proclamation of the kingdom coming. When the dove descends, the kingdom comes. And in Jesus Christ, it came that day. And what he promised happened. We know in his ministry that the blind were healed, that the prisoners were set free, not prisoners in jail, but prisoners of the spirit. Those held captive by the power of sin and the devil were released and set free. And so the kingdom had come because the dove had descended. The Holy Spirit was there in power with Christ and where the spirit is, the kingdom comes. Now this is important for us because we still know the need for the kingdom. We still know what it is to be captive. We still know the words of our enemy, the devil, that speaks to us. You know, and he speaks to you in different places and in different ways, depending on where you are in your journey with Christ. You know, sometimes that voice is just the voice of a lullaby saying, don't worry about it. Don't wake up. Don't worry about your sin. Don't worry about how you're out of line with God. Don't worry about the troubles in your life because you're okay. You're a good person and you don't need to worry about it. In our rest and in our sleep and our slumber, the devil coos to us and tries to make us not see and not understand where we are and where we need to be. And when we try to make those steps towards Christ, when we first come to realize we need him and we start to move that direction, the devil says to us, our captor says, God will never want you. He knows what you've done. I know what you've done. How can you ever imagine that he would accept you in heaven? Our jailer speaks still to us. And so we know what it is to need to be free. We know what it is to walk in spiritual blindness and need the light to come. We know what it is to need the kingdom to break in among us. So next week, we're going to read the story about what happened in Nazareth and how they responded to that message. The question for us this morning is how do we respond? 
The question for us this morning is, are we ready for the dove to descend upon us and make us a people of the kingdom of God? Are we ready for the dove to come so that the kingdom might follow? Are we longing for the Holy Spirit to come so that the kingdom that breaks us free from our captivity, that gives us the light of Christ, might shine among us? Do we want what God wants to give us this day? Thank you. Are we longing for the coming of the Holy Spirit? Or are we just happy to be who we are? You know, I love, I love church. I've dedicated my life to serving the church. But there's a big difference between the church and the kingdom of God. The church is the vehicle that helps draw us closer to the kingdom of God, but it is not the kingdom of God. And sometimes we can be too comfortable just being the church and not longing for the breaking out of the Holy Spirit among us that is the kingdom at work. And we deny ourselves the opportunity to be free. We deny ourselves the opportunity to know the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, and to be what God calls us to be. So this day, I wonder, I ask you, do we want to be the church, or do we want to be a people of the kingdom? Do we want to be the church, or do we want to be the kingdom of God here on earth. If we want to be the kingdom of God here on earth, we need to pray and ask that the Holy Spirit come in power upon us as he came upon Christ so that the kingdom might truly come. You know, it happened that day in Nazareth. It happened throughout Jesus's ministry. We saw the way that he moved among the people. He cast out the devil and the demons. He healed the people. He convicted people of their sin and turned them to the path of God. We saw in the early days of the church how the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles in that little room on Pentecost and by that power drew people to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. In our own history, our tradition as Methodists, there was a day in which the Holy Spirit came upon this small group of Christians in England who wanted to live into the power of God. They had the form of religion, but not the power of the Holy Spirit, and they prayed for it, and God poured it out upon them. And in the early days of the Methodist movement, they say that you would know when the Methodists had come to a place, had been in a town, because you would go there and visit in a town and a place you were being full of people who were chasing after sin, who were caught in all kinds of destructive behaviors. When the Methodists had come and the Holy Spirit had come with them, the town changed because the people were changed by the breaking out of the kingdom of God among them. This is who we were as a people. And the question today is, is it who we might be again here in Sheridan, Indiana? You know, I've talked uh, with people in my year and a half or so with you, and I've heard us talk. I've heard the stories. I've heard the longing for the day when we had so many people in the balcony here that people worried about whether it was safe to sit up there or not. I've, I've had talks even this week about how we used to be a more multi-generational church. The children's moment, we didn't wonder if we'd have enough kids to come because we knew there were plenty. And I, as you know, every week I get in my inbox, I get emails, I get videos, I get things telling me how to be a big and successful church if you just do these things and follow this path. But I, I want to tell you honestly, I would rather be a church of 25 people where the kingdom of God is fully present than a church of 25,000 who are just going through the motions. I would rather be a church with just a few people really leaning into the power of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, where people are really re freed from their sins, where new life happens, where people are healed and transformed. I'd rather 20 people like that in this church than 300 who are just here because we're going through the motions. Because when the dove descends, the kingdom comes. And so my prayer for us as a church is that we might all cry out for God, for the Holy Spirit to come among us so that the kingdom might come again as it did that day and the good news might be preached. Let us pray. Holy God, it was when the Holy Spirit came upon Christ that the proclamation 
of the kingdom went forth. And so, O oh Lord, we pray as we are gathered here, Lord, send your spirit upon us. Oh God, we don't know what that will look like, what that will be, what that will do to us, but we know if we would be the kingdom of God here on earth, we must have the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, pour out your spirit, we pray, so that we might, with Christ, proclaim good news to those who are lost. Set us free. Give us your power, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.